Right now, you're about to get to see the SCA Barista Foundations as it was recorded during COVID. Let's talk a little bit about espresso grinders. There are two major distinctions in espresso grinders and uh, there's lots to unpack here you know the technology is always improving and changing but one of the mainstays that you have seen and will continue to see in the coffee industry is the manual paddle espresso grinder so in terms of the actual construction of the grinder the back the housing is generally all the same we have a motor which spins a blade a burr and uh, it spins it against the top burr which is fixed generally and so as these burrs spin they crush the coffee as the coffee flows through we can move those burrs closer together and the coffee will be ground more fine we can unscrew and move those burrs further apart and the coffee will be more coarse so that's this collar here that we tighten or loosen we pull it more fine or more coarse as we tighten that collar we will make the coffee more fine and the burrs will be closer together as we loosen the collar the burrs will open up and the coffee will become more coarse so that's the basic science here we've got gravity feeding beans into a grinding area and then in that grinding area there's a channel and that channel will release the coffee now in this more traditional setup, we have a dosing chamber. So from the bean hopper to the collar, through the burrs, into the grinding chamber, and into the dosing chamber, we receive our coffee. As we receive the coffee into the dosing chamber, uh, there is a paddle and this paddle on the inside there are springs which uh, turn and then return the paddle back into its original position we pull the paddle for preset motion and that was about one one and a half paddles so generally you can set up your grinder so that two or three paddles will fill up your portafilter basket and that's the way that uh, original training was done right you just fill up this chamber and one two you've got a nice rounded surface here or one two three you filled up your basket and then you can pull your espresso shot uh, now as the technology has changed what we've done we'll get an automatic dosing uh, and I can turn this on as well. So this usually has an on position. Uh, the machine is on or off, ready to go. And then we can engage. Disengage. Uh, there's also a way to open and close the flow of the beans here. So if you want to uh, stop the flow of the beans, clean out the chamber, you can do so. Now, what we've done with newer versions of uh, this is we've taken off this dosing chamber in the paddle, and right here, the channel where the ground coffee, fresh ground espresso will come forward, we put a, a chute or a head, and that chute will directly fill this espresso basket. Uh, my automatic grinder is not available to me today, so uh, you can visualize and see in the photo there. But rather than me manually turning this on and off, I can have a manual switch on and off. Also, we have simple computer timers, and so I can program that timer to be 4.5 seconds or 4.8 seconds, and it'll, it'll turn on this grinding um, the burr will turn on for 4.5 seconds to dose coffee. Now if I add three tenths of a second, I'm going to add just slightly more coffee. And then by putting that onto a scale, I can measure and set my time according to my specific coffee blend. Naturally, if I grind more coarse, the coffee will flow through easier and faster and I will grind more coffee 
I grind more fine, closing those burrs together, then I will actually get a little less coffee out because it just takes longer for that coffee to work through a smaller uh, fine gap than it does a bigger coarse gap. And I use these measurements just to uh, what embellish or exaggerate the fine coarse divide, of course. So uh, lots of different things to consider here. We don't speak in this course about the difference between conical and flat burrs, but you can see some pictures there where a conical burr has uh, you know, that cone shape and then two flat burrs, which are commonly used in a lot of espresso machines today. Uh, conical burrs can, uh, depending on the material they're made of, a conical burr can have a longer life and perhaps provide a cooler grinding environment which is good, you want to keep your espresso grounds cool, not heating them. But uh, flat burrs have also made huge strides in terms of the quality of the grind, the flavor, um, grinding speeds. We can put larger and larger flat burrs inside of our grinders. So when you choose to buy a grinder, there is this, uh, this cost-benefit analysis. When you pay more for your grinder, you're going to get more features. You're, you should be getting better burrs. You should be improving the general uh, quality of your espresso grounds. And when you improve the quality of your espresso grounds, you're going to dramatically improve the quality of your shop. Hey there friends, sorry for the interruption. Why don't you go get yourself a refill on coffee? And while we're at it, take time if you haven't already, please subscribe or consider sharing this link with a friend. I've put out as much information as I can here on YouTube at howtocoffeepro.com and at sca.training. Resources, tools, kits, a lot of it's free to help you and to help your friends, to help your colleagues in coffee. So if you have any questions, reach out to me directly, reach out to my team and check out those resources. Don't forget to subscribe, add a comment, and let's get back to the course. This setup here is, uh, this is not a setup that I would put together. Uh, this is actually my church cafe. And um, I'm filming today from the cafe just for a new fresh environment for the videos. But uh, this machine is a very nice machine and this grinder is just a very average grinder. Uh, what I would prefer if I was setting up uh, for the first time, and this is what we did when we were in China, we actually invested into a super fine grinder and we only needed an average machine at the time. It was a very small uh, cafe. And uh, by ensuring that our grinder was a very high quality grinder, then uh, even an average machine could take those results and make a wonderful espresso out of it. But oftentimes people will have a reverse logic and they'll get the cheapest grinder they can find and spend more money on the machine which looks nice or perhaps in their mind is the most important piece of equipment. But again, in the coffee supply chain, we're always trying to preserve and protect quality. And so we grind before we ever bring it to the machine. If we destroy a certain amount of quality on a grinder, then we can't bring that back even with a really nice machine. That was a little divergence from the course, but I think it's, I think it's helpful to you. So if you're thinking of purchasing a machine, a grinder, I'd love to give you whatever insight I can uh, help you choose between a couple models. Perhaps I've used them or have seen this before. There are benefits to the automatic or volumetric on-demand grind grinder. So that's where I would have a timer on the side and I can press the button. In general, it should be, uh, it should have less waste, right? I don't know, maybe am I, is that enough? Or maybe while I'm grinding, I'm paddling. There may be extra grounds in here, in my dosing chamber. So if those sit and then I have to wait for three minutes before the next guest comes up, well, I've just had some coffee sitting there for three minutes. I either need to throw that away, which is wasteful, or I need to blend it into some fresh, which is less than ideal. So an automatic or volumetric grinder can give you an on-demand freshness, right? So you're only grinding what you need at that time. 
It may be easier to train people on because there's just one less motion, one less human error that you introduce. And uh, the problem though is it can be more expensive. There are a number of different uh, pros and cons here. And then the manual dosing, they actually produce great espressos. When you have a more complex bean blend, if you have five, six, seven beans in an espresso, like some of the old traditional Italian espressos did, by grinding a little extra coffee in a high volume environment, you're creating a secondary blend, right? So up here, the coffee is blended together, but I may get a lot of Colombian and Guatemalan and just a little Sumatra and India and Kenya, for example. So if I grind more coffee through, I statistically increase my odds that as I mix these grounds with my paddle, pulling into my portafilter, I may have an even more harmonized blend of coffee than I did initially in my beans. Uh, these machines are usually a little bit cheaper too, uh, just old technology, but it still works great. They can be a little messier to clean up. So uh, again, cost benefit analysis, and a lot, of the, a lot of the benefit too comes from the burrs and from the actual kind of the housing and the delivery. So it's good to do a little bit of research. Don't just buy, I, I seldom recommend buying a used grinder. And that's usually because, um, you know, you can buy a used machine and repair or clean a few parts and then it, it can run like new. With a grinder, um, you're usually getting someone else's problem or someone else's neglect. And usually if you buy a used grinder, you need to replace those burrs because you always want fresh burrs and burrs are expensive. So if you're buying a grinder, it's usually a good idea to get one brand new. Again, the cost difference may be a few hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, whereas a machine, you're talking several thousand dollars between a new and a used. Some of the basic components we talked about on the uh, grinder here, let's look at some of the basic components on the espresso machine. So uh, you have a nice diagram there, but I'll walk you through real quick. We have our portafilter. I keep a unique, and you wanna, you wanna build in this practice. I keep a unique a gray colored stainless steel portafilter cloth, and I keep that with my grinder put it in a decent place uh, just so that it's easy there and uh, always clean my portafilter baskets with it. My portafilter will go into the group head. The group head is where the water comes out. This is uh, 93 degree water at nine bars pressure and um, it's a high pressure through the um, portafilter basket. Inside of the portafilter is a basket that holds the espresso. Now, we have uh, steam wands, and we can turn those steam wands on and off. Uh, hot water dispenser, depending on your machine. Now, this water is going to be extremely hot not recommended for uh, drinking temperature, like Americanos, this will make an extremely hot Americano, but it may be good to start off a tea if you're doing a tea latte. Uh, you have drip tray, there's usually filtration, you know, the legs that it stands on, the cup warmer is up top, we store some of our espresso cups or um, we'll put our timer. You wanna have a unique rag that is wet the damp rag for your milk. I usually like to use a white cloth. This is not a white cloth right now, but you keep this uh, designated only for the milk. You never use this one for cleaning the countertop. I have one down here underneath my machine for cleaning the countertop. And I like to use a black one down here. I like to use a white up here. And I like to use a gray over here. Those are just three of my rags. Uh, you can add in more colors too for other purposes. There's boiler pressure, and uh, we talk about the difference between your boiler pressure, which is for steaming the milk, and then your dispensing or espresso brew pressure. And so the boiler pressure should be one to 1.5. 
the dispensing pressure should be around nine and then uh, it may jump suddenly when the pump kicks on and off but we brew anywhere from 7 to 11 higher and lower pressures are being used today in the industry but traditionally we always said uh, at or near nine bars of pressure so at or near nine bars of pressure for your brewing uh, 1 to 1 1.5 for your steaming and uh, be able to walk through an espresso machine be able to walk through a grinder and highlight some of those uh, major components all right and some more tips and tricks on this slide but as you are uh, entering into the cafe and as you have your uh, cafe practices make sure that each day you are warming your machine before you use it this will uh, heat up the water that's inside of the boiler and that water has steam on top that's the steam that we use for the steam wand and that also creates an internal pressure that hot water has an internal water tank pressure which is then delivered to a secondary pump for the espresso brewing pressure we want our cups on top to be warm. We can put some latte cups up there, some cappuccino cups for service. And uh, by brewing into a warm cup, you're going to have a warm protected espresso for your customers to enjoy. Uh, keep cleaning as you go. Keep clean rags, keep a clean environment. We're going to talk more about cleanliness in the upcoming slides here. But uh, those are some of the first seeds to plant because uh, cleanliness is number one, two, and three in food service and coffee preparation. Oh, hey there. So just in case I forget to tell you or you haven't seen it already, go ahead and check out howtocoffeepro.com where we have lots of coffee classes available online for you or www.sca.training and you can find resources, lab tools, tasting kits, all kinds of stuff that you need to up your specialty coffee journey. So if you're not already on the email list, then you're probably missing out on some of the great options we have at howtocoffeepro.com or at sca.training. As always, if you leave your comments below, if you subscribe and follow, and if you join that email list, you're not gonna miss out on all the great offers, the announcements, the new support and products and courses that we have for you.